Good evening, I'm Lena Hassanel. Welcome to BizWorld. MIDF Burhad has allocated 50 million ringgit, especially for women entrepreneurs via its MYS program. Its CEO, Azizi Mustafa, said the program offers financing rates as low as 3% with flexible tenures. Of almost 1.2 million entrepreneurs, uh, only about 20% are women entrepreneurs. And majority of the women entrepreneurs basically are involved in the services sector. So this program is, apart from uh, encouraging more women into Premier, mm -hmm. we also want them to diversify and move towards their high value added industries. He was met at the launch of the program, which coincides with the International Women's Day. Under the program, 10 micro-women businesses will also be picked to be part of an eight-month coaching initiative under SME Corp. Meanwhile, the Malaysia Building Society Burhat MBSB will launch its three-year transformation plan until 2026, mid this year after acquiring MIDF. Its group CEO, Rafi Hanif, said it will focus on small, medium enterprises, SMEs, and women entrepreneurs. We cannot be a supermarket catering for all walks of customers, all types of customers. So we believe our focus should be on SME. That is again SME, we will be then more thematic. So one theme that we're trying to develop is women-led entrepreneurs, right? So we want to customize our program to help women entrepreneurs to grow. In October last year, MBSB completed the acquisition of MIDF from Pramodala Nasional Burhat for 1.1 billion ringgit. Following the emerges, the enlarged group emerges as a major player in Islamic banking, offering a whole new range of new offerings from consumer banking, commercial and SME banking to corporate and investment banking businesses. The Federation of Malaysian Manufacturers, FMM, seeks to improve China-Malaysia cooperation following the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding between FMM and the RCEP Industry Cooperation Committee, RICC, recently. In a statement, FMM said its goal is to create a framework for cooperation between the Federation and RICC in order to assist China's and Malaysia's economic development. By utilizing the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, it also aims to develop mutual understanding and cooperation between the corporate communities of both parties. FMM added that the MOU will serve as a platform for businesses in Malaysia and China to further elevate trade and investment cooperation among businesses. Bursa Malaysia closed higher today on continuous buying activities in plantation, financial and energy sectors. At SPM, the F F FBM KLCI increased by 4.03 points to 1,539.86 points. Losers outnumbered gainers with 495 against 486 counters, while 425 counters traded unchanged. According to UOSK Han Wealth Advisors, investors are meticulously assessing various factors. These include the prospect of RTE cuts and recumption of foreign net selling. RHB Research is maintaining a neutral call on the banking sector amid moderating earnings growth prospects. While the sector's profits slipped recently, the firm, however, found that there is still a strong demand for loans, especially for retail mortgages, small and medium-sized SME businesses and infrastructure projects. It said asset quality appears benign, with no major stress areas noted, further supported by some banks having taken the opportunity to strengthen provision buffers last year and holding on to the overlays. On the flip side, net interest margin guidance was mixed. The firm also said there has been some yield pressure in segments such as mortgages and SMEs, and strong credit growth may lead to a pickup in deposit competition. That's all the time we have for BizWorld. I'm Lena Hassanel. Thank you for watching and keep tuning in to TV Tiga.